Hello friends, and welcome to Chess Praxis. Firstly I would like to point out that most other openings come and go, drop in popularity, and then make a comeback when a novelty is discovered. The Rui Lopez or the Spanish game is the best and most solid choice for E4 players, from beginner to super grandmaster level, and that will never change. Because the idea of the opening follows the best opening rules and principles, and it just can't grow old. The opening starts after e4 by white, challenging the center and attacking the f5 and d5 squares. It also opens the way for his queen and his bishop in the f1 square. It is the classic approach to most openings in chess, with the queen's pawn moving to d4. Black replies with e5 to take his share in the center as well, and stopping white's main plan, which is to push his queen's pawn from d2 to d4 which would create a formidable center and give white an advantage. White now replies with the second move knight to f3, which is attacking the e5 pawn, and supporting d4 once again after the pawn from c2 to c3. So simply continuing to push his idea of creating a strong center. We also notice that white, after developing one of his small pieces from the king's side, is one step closer to castling and securing his king, of course and black once again has to stop that. He can defend his pawn with many moves, including the pawn to d6, or to f6, bishop to d6, queen to e7, then he has the strongest and the most logical move in this position which is knight to c6. Most of these moves are not good for black except for this knight move. Once again stopping the d4 push and defending the e5 pawn. Here, White can play many logical moves such as knight to c3, the pawn to d4, bishop to e2, or c4, or also to b5. And since our theme today is the Spanish game or the Rui Lopez opening, the white has one move from all of these moves that we mentioned, which will lead us to this opening. And she's the bishop to b5. It's similar to the Italian game opening, which is also characterized by the bishop move to c4. This is for reference only so as not to confuse these two openings. So, this is now the Rui Lopez, and white now puts more pressure on both squares indirectly, by challenging the c6 knight. So, it's indirectly forcing the d4 push and the capture of e5, and this is now the starting position of the opening. All the moves make perfect sense, but it's important to understand what the idea behind each move is in order to be able to follow the variations. The point is in this situation, basically, white forces black to decide how to protect his pawn. So, from this move, the black has two main moves, or rather three main variations. The Berlin defense, which starts after knight to f6. The main lines which lead either to the closed or the open Rui Lopez. And the exchange variation. I'm going to go over the main variations briefly in this video but each one will be covered in detail in an individual video. This move is challenging the b5 bishop immediately, and the bishop only has two options in this position. Will he back down, or will he take in c6? Retreating back to either c4, d3 or e2 would be a waste of tempo because wouldn't keep the pressure on the c6 knight. Also, his retreating back can cause a psychological defeat for the white to some extent. So the most common idea is to go back to a 4, which is still putting pressure on the c6 knight. That's the starting position of most lines in the Rui Lopez. Another way white could react to a6 is by simply taking on c6, without retreating. So, breaking the pieces in c6 is a good move, and this is the easiest variation to learn I would say. This is the exchange variation of the Rui Lopez. And one of the common ideas of this variation is that white is counting on his pawn majority on the king side, which is far superior to black's pawn majority on the queen side, which will be useful to him during the endgame phase, despite an equal number of pawns. This is because of the weakness that he created in the structure of the black's pawns. Black will be unable to force his pawns forward and white will be able to perhaps even create a passed pawn after some central pawns get exchanged. But in return, he will pay a heavy price by allowing the black to keep the two bishops together, which studies have shown to be a powerful advantage for their owner. In this position of course, 
There is also something I would like to point out, and it concerns the E5 pawn, which was protected by the knight that was taken on C6. Some of you may think that the white can take that free pawn with his knight, but it is quite the opposite. If he takes, then black will be able to retrieve his pawn easily, with a much better position than white. He may respond by simply moving his queen to d4, or g5, or even to e7. And this is one of the most common opening traps in the Rui Lopez. And after the knight retreats, the queen simply takes and black will have equal material with a better position. After the exchange happens, white has forfeited castling rights and black stands a little bit better. But after dxc6, the position is still very complex. There are a lot of lines in the exchange variation of the Rui Lopez and I will be covering them in a separate video, as I told you before. But this was, in short, the second way to react to this a6 move. And as we said, the strongest move in this situation is to go back with the bishop to a4, and put more pressure on the knight of c6. Because the bishop on b5 is the bishop of the light squares. He's considered one of the strongest pieces of the white, and therefore, it's not good to make an exchange with this knight. So, the white keeps his bishop by retreating it to a4. And also puts more pressure on the knight of c6 at the same time, in the event that the queen's pawn is pushed to d6. So, black has a few ways to continue playing, such as the pawn to d6, the bishop to e7, or the knight to f6 or even to e7. But by far the most common one, and how 99% of games are played, is with black continuing with knight to f6. And it's a very logical move. As we can see, the black begins to develop his small pieces from the king's side, and at the same time increases his control in the center and attacks the pawn on e4. Here, the white can defend this pawn, whether by the knight to c3, or by the pawn to d3. But he may also do the castling directly, because he will get his pawn back easily if the black takes it. For example, if the black takes this pawn on e4 with his knight, the white will be able to play his rook on e1 and then press both the knight on e4 and the pawn on e5. And after black retreats with his knight, the white will capture on e5. Of course, in this position, the black can defend his knight with a d5 to keep the pawn he won. But the white will take on c6, and then retrieve the pawn. Or he could simply play d3, or d4. In either case, he will retrieve his pawn with a better position. So, for all of the reasons we have mentioned, taking a pawn on d4 is not a good idea for black. Therefore, it often continues with the bishop in e7, for the castling of course. And here is the closed Rui Lopez. Now, white can play d3, the rook to e1, or the knight to c3 to defend the e4 pawn. Let's suppose that he plays his rook on e1 since the pawn structure dictates that we should do so with rook, which is also the main move in this variation. Here, black has to be very careful, because if he castling for example, white will take the knight on c6. And after black takes again, white will win the free pawn with his knight. Even if black now plays his queen in d4, the white knight retreating to f3, and this pawn is protected by the rook, and black cannot take it with the knight, because the white knight sought after his queen. So in this position, b5's move is very important for black. In addition, the importance of moving the pawn to a6 appears to us clearly at this moment, because it supports the b5's pawn. The bishop retreating to b3 and castles. At this point, after both sides have secured their kings, the real battle for the center control will begin. And white here has several good moves, but the pawn to c3 is the most suitable move for this, since it will support the d2's pawn, when pushed d4 square. And this is what the black player doesn't have, because his knight prevents that pawn from moving to support his pawn on d5 as well. So, he's restricted to supporting the e5's pawn with a d6 a pawn, hoping to control the center in the future. 
and this position now can be seen in probably 20% of Grandmaster games which start with E4, E5. But this is the position you have to remember, because many games, and almost all the games in the closed Rui Lopez will look like this. The players would get to this point playing a tempo, wasting absolutely no time, and then they'd start thinking. Generally, from this position the white player can play many moves, to complete the development of the pieces. But the pawn's move to h3 remains the strongest move in this position. And prepare to move the d2's pawn to d4 square, and direct control of the center. The purpose of this move is also to prevent the black bishop moving to g4 and pinning the white knight. Let's suppose that white plays d4 first, bishop on g4, and white will have to push his pawn to d5 in order not to lose it. And after the knight to a5, bishop to c2, black will push his pawn to c6, and the situation here is a bit bad for white. So, this h3's move is very necessary if white's purpose is to push his pawn to d4. The second plan by white is to transfer the undeveloped b1 knight to the g3 square. The point is, to transfer the knight to d2 after d3, to f1 and then to g3. And from this point on, white is able to start an attack on the king's side. And this is one of the most common maneuvers in chess, and almost every closed Rui Lopez game sees that maneuver happen. And Black, on the other hand, has a few plans of his own. Firstly, he might try to get the knight out of the way for the c-pawn to move, it will either go to a5 or to b8, or perhaps even waste a few more temp to maneuver and to let Black be able to play c5, or c6 in some positions. Black is also attempting to play d5 in some positions, and to break in the center himself. The closed Rui Lopez often means each side must slowly maneuver their pieces. You can see there hasn't been one piece that's been captured so far. Generally, there are many possibilities that this opening offer, and studying them will work on developing every part of your chess skills. And this clip, it was just a little view of it to get an idea of how to play it. So, I will go into a lot more details and much more information about the Berlin defense, the exchange variation, and the rest of the other variations in a separate video. Okay everyone, I hope you liked this video on the chess opening Rui Lopez or the Spanish game, and see you soon with more chess videos. Don't forget to like this video if you found it useful. For more such chess videos, hit the subscribe button below. Thanks for watching.